psychometrics, especially the HPTI, mm -hmm. for development processes. Because with the HPTI, it's a leadership tool that we're looking at leadership potential, um, but it's also a general personality assessment that we can use to assess people on a variety of traits like conscientiousness, adjustment, and we can get a good sense of how people act, think, behave at work, and mm -hmm. how they're likely to in future. Um, but one of the kind of necessary limitations of any development process, especially if you're looking at leadership, is some people are included, some people may not be because they may not have that leadership potential. But even when you're looking at selection for development, um, some people are selected and some people aren't mm -hmm. by kind of necessity. And that's how it works. But a well-designed process really shouldn't piss everyone else off who isn't selected, right? Yeah. Um, so when you're using psychometrics in that way, how do you make sure that they're inclusive for everyone and useful for everyone? So I think um, this is one of the things I really like about the HPTI is that whole aligning it to your company culture mm -hmm. and, and the weight that you place on certain traits like competitiveness, conscientiousness, and, and how that's likely to show up in the most desirable fashion for the leadership culture of the organisation rather than it necessarily be exactly what the scale and description of the report says. It's more like, well, we expect in this type of culture we might see more competitiveness because it's naturally entrepreneurial, for example. And that's why we need experts like you who can say this is the company culture, mm -hmm. like we've got this standard model of leadership potential, but here's how it manifests in this organisation, right? Mm -hmm. Here's what it looks like for us on the ground you know, uh, at, the, at the top floor in the corner office, here's what it looks like for us. Mm -hmm. And I think, so that, that was something I was very mindful of when I was, was using it, is like applying it back to the culture, looking at how that plays out at different levels of management, because the way you handle those conversations in terms of yeah. the, any potential fallout will vary if the person, say, on a high potential program of, okay, we want to fast track you to be our future leaders of, of um, you know, departments or, or of, um, you know, operating companies countries depending on how the the matrix is, is set up so i think that's often an easier sell because they're a work in progress yeah. whereas if people are right on the borderline of about to step into that role obviously time is not on their side so you have to be mindful of what level of leadership are they at um, and, and what their experience has been to date in order to really show those examples of, of where those behaviors have been in excess because at other roles um, within their career it may play well for them to be where they are, but it's yeah. helping them understand, well, that looks very different if you're managing the budget, if you're having to deal with different stakeholders. Yeah. Another thing as well is linking it back to the behavioural frameworks or, or competency frameworks of that organisation, mm -hmm. so that you can give examples of this is what we'd expect of our leaders, these these traits like uh, conscientiousness, for example, or risk adjustment, relate to these three areas, so that although it's a tool that you we, we bought, we're actually linking it back to our company culture. So it shows that relevance because I think if people can't relate to it on, yeah. on a company level and also on an individual level, if you don't link it back to what's in it for them, um, then if, if it's not as favourable as they expect it to be, mm -hmm. then they're going to be more dismissive of it. Whereas if you set it up up front of yeah. this is how it maps to our culture, these are the things we're looking for, um, this is why it's important for this leadership population to demonstrate, mm -hmm. then it's a lot harder for them to, to, to kind of disregard it because you know it's clear that it's credible tool otherwise we wouldn't use it yeah. um, but actually it's been um, it's been used with the, the context in mind and I think another thing as well in terms of if uh, participants weren't selected on the program off the back of that output or any other psychometric you really need to have good conversations with their line managers around okay this is the route for some of the participants based on their readiness and this is the route for the others, how are you going to reinforce that um, if, 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 they're, if they're not selected for this program or, or the kind of plan, what seemed to be the plan A intervention. So how do you deal with a situation where someone is really, really good at their job, they're really high performing, but in all honesty, they're not a high potential leader. Maybe they don't have the right traits, maybe they don't have the right skills, abilities, maybe they don't really want to be. Mm. Um, what does that conversation look like for someone who is performing well in their job and is probably going to succeed most improving in that position instead of, say, a leadership position. Mm -hmm. I, th I think it depends on um, what's been agreed in terms of their line manager's role because yeah. I think it's very easy to get into career development conversations that may, parts of it may be outside of your gift 
yeah. to really um, give them good advice on. That's a good so point I think too. I'm always yeah. quite careful to compartmentalize, you know, this is the tool, this is what we're, we're using it for, this is what I'm hearing is important to you and, and how it shows up in your profile, and then try to get them to, regardless of actually whether they they fit the desired criteria or not, have, have an action-based plan off the back of it, um, you know, and, and see what things they want to do more of, what they want to be mindful of. Ideally, you want to be using a 360 yeah. alongside of it to get that feedback from the team because, again, um, how they may see themselves and how others may see them could be very disconnected. Yeah. So I think we'd, we'd really want to do that to help them build their self-awareness. And then if the willingness, as you mentioned, is there to, to progress in a more people management focus in the future, help them understand you know, what the goal looks like in order to make that happen. So it's not just goals that they want to take forward in that short term period, but in the long term, what do you need to do to make that happen? And then invite them to discuss that with their, their line manager ha and, and us having briefed them to say like, these are the types of conversations some of your population will be having yeah. with you. Um, if, if you want to make it a three-way discussion, we can be involved, but we have to make sure that it's not seen as something that we are involved in the recruitment of how they get promoted and things like that. When, yeah. Depending on what your role in the company is or whether you're an associate, you just have to make sure that you've agreed what you where, the, where that boundary starts and stops because otherwise it, you, you could almost be the person that's seen as deciding their destiny and, yeah. and that's definitely not where that's I'd such a like good point to too this is why i'm glad i'm talking to you about managing expectations on mm. all sides too right because i'm talking in a very kind of idealistic way of these mm. are your ideal goals this is where you could be mm. but you can't tell that to someone in a debrief especially if you're not in that position yeah to say this is my role we'll talk about this in this limited scope mm. um and that's what you were talking about earlier too is about kind of transparency honesty mm -hmm. and then also managing those expectations to be clear about you know what the process is yeah. Um, and offering the three-way discussion if it's helpful if, yeah. if the manager feels uncomfortable to have that conversation because yeah. they don't understand the output well enough or whether the individual yeah. would like you to be there based on the goals that you've tried to, to kind of get them to commit to at the end of the session so you could almost facilitate that but really it depends on what's available in the business and, and some companies if they see that willingness they'll, they, they'll almost go against you know what the profile says if they think the person's hungry and, and willing to work on it maybe yeah. they're happy to let them be that work in progress in an initial management role whereas other companies will, will be very um cut and dry about it and say no if you don't fulfill xyz criteria you're not getting the role so you also have to, to think about how it plays out within the culture as well yeah